You know how Elon Musk has spent years now cultivating a reputation as an eccentric genius, which is actually really easy to do when you're a billionaire born into wealth and you can pay engineers to do all the actual work. Primarily, Elon Musk is a financier and a venture capitalist. It's been his selective investment that's led to the massive accrual of wealth. The guy's not an engineer, but he gets a rep as an engineer because he self-styles as one. And that, again, that's something you can pull off when you, like, own Tesla and Boring Company and SpaceX, and you pay actual engineers to do stuff. Sure, maybe you, as, like, the lead guy, might constantly overstate the expectations one should have for your products and then fail to meet it or constantly have to recall your shitty cars or whatever. But, you know, at least it's something. The problem with being the owner of a social media company is that uh, this is actually a really bad place to be if you're an overconfident idiot who wants to maintain a mirage of competence. Social media companies are not easy to run. They are literally the most publicly visible institution in existence. There's none other. Find me an institution more publicly visible than a social media company. You'll not. This is as evident as one gets. And because, of course, stable genius Elon Musk thinks himself some kind of, you know, genius savant, he has immediately implanted his brilliant schemes onto the management of this fine app. I really mean it. A dog, a dog wouldn't have done this poorly. Elon Musk is speed running the worst imaginable decisions. I can't, it's difficult to even make fun of because it feels like it's, it's undignified for me to even take it seriously enough to explain why it's bad. You know what I mean? It would be like if somebody was doing a dentistry exam and they like brought a hammer with them and they started running around smashing all the mannequins and stuff. Like, Writing a detailed report on how every individual smash is, like, not conducive to proper dentistry feels like kind of a waste, you know what I mean? It's, like, we're so far out of the ballpark of competent, like, company ownership that it's, like, we're in a different dimension right now. It's phenomenal. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about wealth, all right? Now, I assume most of you know this, but not everyone does, and it's good to, you know, it's good to, good to make sure everyone's on the same page. When they say stuff like, Bill Gates made 10 billion in the past week, or Elon Musk lost 10 billion that day alone, it's not technically true. See, for wealthy people, you don't keep your wealth in a bank account, right? Uh, you keep them in stocks and options and a variety of, you know, uh, possessions that are meant to appreciate in interest. Um, for Elon Musk, an enormous amount of his wealth is tied up in the... Um, stocks that he has and the variety of companies that he controls. Now, I want to show you something very funny, okay? It's, it's comedy gold. This is Tesla stock. Elon Musk had to sell billions of Tesla stock to shore up the cash uh, 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 deficits of Twitter, and he did so at less than half the value of Twitter stock compared to one year ago. Less than half. Twitter might actually end up being his downfall. And I'll tell you why. Many of Elon Musk's companies are massively overvalued. They are wildly overestimated in worth um, at the stock market. And a lot of that comes down to taking advantage of extremely preferential government subsidies, which is its whole other thing. But a lot of it also comes down to Elon Musk's reputation. See, whether or not Tesla is highly evaluated or not highly evaluated comes down to how soy everyone is being about Elon Musk that day. This is why company stock goes up when they announce something, not when they start selling something. It can go up when they start selling something, but announcements are able to drive up company stock, and that's because hype drives evaluation, and the evaluation of the worth of a stock is what determines, well, its worth, because that's how the system works. What all this means is that Tesla is really not much of anything without Elon Musk. In spite of the fact that Elon Musk doesn't own all of Tesla, Elon owns Twitter in its entirety. He bought Twitter. But Elon controls, I think, about 20% of Tesla stock, which is more than any other individual, but not a single majority, meaning that the uh, 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 board of shareholders would be capable of ousting Elon Musk as CEO if his behavior got bad enough. 
Elon Musk has been a not great CEO for a while now. Why do you think they keep him around? The answer is pretty obvious. It's because he's real life Tony Stark, guys. He's he's fucking because he's real life Tony Stark. Because he's he's a genius. Because he's gonna save the world, guys. Because he's a mascot. That's why. So what we have right now is the world's wealthiest man whose power, wealth, and influence are dictated almost entirely by his hype. And his hype is dictated almost entirely by the perception of him as an eccentric billionaire. How do you think things are going for that right now? He might be entering a death spiral. Twitter will lose a lot of money. He's already had to sell a bunch of Tesla stock to shore up costs. He paid too much for Twitter to begin with and he's already having to sell depreciated Tesla stock to cover it up. The worse Twitter does, the more money it loses, the worse Elon looks, the less Tesla's worth, the less the stock is worth when he sells it to cover up the losses. It is an actual, possible death spiral. It might end up taking Twitter out with it, which, good, whatever, fucking, it's Twitter, you know? Okay, sure, fine. But this move, this might go beyond just a poor decision from Elon Musk. This might actually end up, like, severely crippling him, uh, financially and politically, because this is as good of evidence as you're ever going to get that the man is not actually uh, the real-life Tony Stark. Uh, truly phenomenal stuff. Yeah, not to mention the more Tesla stock he sells to cover costs, the less control he has over it. Yeah, it's... Really funny. Uh, it's extremely funny. It's incredibly funny. What are your thoughts on the chance that Elon has an iFunny account? Dude, Elon 100% has an iFunny account. 100%. Elon believed his own hype, didn't he? Yeah, 100%. That's, that's what defines people like Elon Musk. Elon Musk, Donald Trump, that's the thing that makes them exceptional, you know? They're not just grifters. Grifters on their own are usually smart enough to understand when to back out of the game they're playing. Like uh, Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro was a big anti-Trump guy, and then when he realized there was no path forward but Trump, he just stopped that and started singing Trump's praises. He would do so in a kind of like half-heartedly critical way, you know, oh, I think Trump is mean and bullish, but the real criticisms he had disappeared. Um, Ben's smart, I still believe that, even if he is incredibly dishonest. He read the writing on the wall, so he pulled away. Yeah, they're yes men, you know? But people like Donald Trump and Elon Musk are exceptional in that they fully 100% believe in themselves, you know? They're like anime protagonists. You know you know how in, like, shonen anime, the protags get stronger when they believe in themselves? That's them. That's the world they live in, okay? It may seem incomprehensible to us, but...